What's up, Cal Gang? All right, so we got the statics problem here. So we have this beam, and we're trying to find the shear and moment diagrams for the beam. So let's go ahead and get started. So I haven't finished this free body diagram yet, so I went ahead and made a drawing of what you see on the screen. And then let's go ahead and add in the rest of our forces. So at A, we have a fixed support. So it's fixed into the wall. So that means that at A, there's gonna be two forces. Some of the forces, in, or there's gonna be A of Y, there's gonna be A of X. And then because it's a fixed support, it's not just a pin, there's also gonna be a moment at A. So we can go ahead and draw the moment at A like this. So there we go. So this is our finished free body diagram, and we're gonna use this to draw everything else. But first of all, if you're trying to draw these shear and moment diagrams, you wanna know all the information about this as possible. That means we wanna figure out what our unknowns are. So our unknowns right now are A of Y, A of X, and moment around A. So let's solve for those. So two of these are gonna be really easy. So of course, let's do some of the forces. So some of the forces in the X direction, zero. So we see A of X pushes in the X direction, and nothing else pushes in the X direction. So we figure out right away that A of X is zero. So that's one thing we need. So let's go ahead and solve for A of Y. So some of the forces in the Y is equal to zero. So it's gonna be A of Y pushes, and then minus 10 from here. And then there's also this uh, distributed load, so it'll be negative three. So it's three kilonewtons per meter, so it's gonna be three times six because it's six meters long. So you move the A of Y over, and you find A of Y is equal to 28 kilonewtons. Then, of course, if we're finding moment at A, we're gonna take the sum of the moments. So sum of the moments at A is equal to zero. So we have A here drawn going counterclockwise, so we're gonna add A, so first add moment of A. And then, so these three kilonewton meters are gonna push down, so we need to find the total force first. So it's gonna be three kilonewton meters times six meters. And that's gonna push it clockwise, so we're gonna subtract that distributed load. So it's gonna be three for the distributed, or three kilonewton per meters, times the six meters, so this gives you the force, and then we need to find the, the center at which it acts at, so it's gonna be halfway, it's gonna be at three meters there. And then we also have this 10 kilonewton load that's also pushing counterclockwise, or pushing clockwise, so we're gonna subtract that too. So it'll be minus 10, and then its distance is six meters. So then you do the math on this, move MA over, and you're gonna get that the moment of A is equal to 114 kilonewton per meter. Okay, so those are the three things that we need to find before we go ahead and solve this. So now, let's go ahead and, and figure this out. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna draw another force body diagram, and this is gonna be useful for us. Uh, so our next force body diagram is just gonna be what would happen if we took a cut at any imaginable spot. So, we're gonna say that we took a cut here. Kind of, you can imagine that. So that means that this distance now is no longer six, but x. This is how far away we are from A. So this is point A still. Uh, we still have A of Y. Uh, a of X is zero, so we don't really have to concern about ourselves with that. We still have the moment at A, which we found to actually be counterclockwise. And then we still have our distributed load, which looks something like this, three kilonewton per meter. So then, of course, we're going to have a shear is what we're trying for. So if we take the cut on the right side, the shear is always going to point downward. So this is B, our shear. And then, of course, our moment is always pointing from the bottom to the top, so it's going to go here. So this is moment. So we're solving, we're gonna to try to graph these as x increases. So now let's go ahead and do that. So if we're looking for a shear, let's go ahead and write an equation for what our, uh, uh, our shear diagram is gonna look like. So of course we're gonna always, like normal, just do some of the forces in the y direction. We know it's gonna be equal to zero, because we're always at equilibrium. So we're starting with a of y pushing up. And then our distributed load, three kilonewton meters, pointing downward, so it's negative three, and then its total is x. Right, you have to multiply the three kilonewton meters by x meters, so it'll be three times x. And then, of course, we also have v, because v pushes down, so it'll be minus v. All right, so then if we move v over, we're gonna get our equation. So v 
is equal to, I'm going to move the 3x over, so it'll be minus 3x plus, and then plugging in what we know a of y to be is 28. Right? So there you go. So now we have an equation for our for our uh, drawing. So let's go ahead and draw this now. Uh, try to keep it so we can do both of our equations. So we can erase these. So let's draw it. Um, yeah, so this is going to always be plus zero. So this is going to be six, which is the end of our beam, and then this is zero, of course. And this is x, which is distance, basically. Distance from a. And then here is shear in kilonewtons. I think we're in kilonewtons, yep. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. So knowing what we know about graphs, basically we're starting at 28, because if x is equal to zero, our shear is equal to 28. And then what's gonna happen is it's just gonna be a linear decrease, minus three every time. This graph is like not, you know, it's not to scale, but. So what are we gonna happen? Well, what happens if x is equal to six, right? We want to know our start point and our end point, so we can just draw a straight line between them. So x is equal to 6, then it's going to be negative 3. So we're going to look at this b of 6 is equal to negative 3 times 6 plus 28. And that's going to be equal to 10. And what that tells us, basically, is that at 6 here, we're going to be at height 10. So we can draw a dot there, and then our shear is just going to be a straight line connecting those. And then, of course, we realize that we end at positive 10, which is convenient because we have this 10 kilonewton force pushing downward right at the end, which is why this vertical line comes in, and you want to make sure that your shear always ends up at zero. If your shear doesn't end up at zero, then you know you're doing something wrong. So there you go. So that's what our shear diagram looks like. And yeah, let's go ahead and get to our next part. So now we got to do the moment diagram. So let's go ahead and do the moments. So if we're doing a moment diagram, we're going to take the sum of the moments at A and try to add them up. So of course we have a moment at A, and then uh, we have the negative 3 kilonewton meter load. So that's making it want to rotate uh, counter -clock or clockwise, so we're going to subtract 3. And then, of course, uh, we have the distance. So if we want to find the total force that it's acting, we have to multiply by x. But then, so this is just the force. If we're finding a moment, we also need to know the distance at which it acts. So the distance at which it acts is going to be its total distance divided by 2, because that's halfway there. So if we want to do that, we're going to take x divided by 2, right? So this is 3 kilonewton per meters times x meters, and then times its center of mass, or where it's acting at. So then, of course, we also have v is pushing downward. So that's going to be minus v times x, of course, because that's its distance. And then, of course, we also have this moment. So this moment is going counterclockwise, or so that's going to be plus m. Yeah, so make sure you get these moments not mixed up. Moment at a is the one we found over there. And then this moment is the moment that is what we're calculating. So what are we going to do? We know it's equal to 0, so we can move the moment to the other side because we're solving for this. It's going to be m is equal to, and so it's going to be negative now, so we're going to distribute that negative over. So it's going to be minus moment at a plus 3, and then it'll be x squared divided by 2. So it'll actually be 1.5x squared. So then it'll be plus b because we're doing the other side. So we have to take what we found earlier. I erased it, didn't I? Okay, let me put it right back. v is equal to negative 3x plus 28. We're going to need that for this part. So we're literally going to plug that in here. So it'll be negative 3x plus 28 x. Right? So there we go. So now I need to simplify this more. So we know moment at A, we found that is negative 144. 114, excuse me, plus 1.5x squared minus distributing that x, negative 3x squared plus 28x. So then all you have to do is simplify this and clean it up, and you're going to find that moment is equal to. Uh, so let's move this over. So 1.5x squared minus 3x is negative 1.5x squared plus 28x minus 114. So that's your equation. And with this equation, now we can draw our graph. Uh, I'm going to keep it there right now. 
So what is this going to look like, right? Well, this might be very harder to visualize than that. Like, that's a linear system. This is not linear. So this is moment and kilonewton uh, meters. Okay, so what are we going to do? So we know that this is 6, right? That's where we're ending, and we're starting at 0. And so what's our intercept going to be? Well, it's going to be a negative 114. So we can label that down there, negative 114, because if x is equal to 0, we're at negative 114. And what's this draw, or what's this going to look like exactly? Well, we can use calculus to figure that out. So if you take the derivative, of course, you can find basically, um, so you can find the x-intercepts if you, or you can find, yeah, the critical points and stuff if you take the derivative. Uh, should we do that? Let's see. Well, basically, if you set m equal to 0, right, if you set the moment equal to 0, you can find the x-intercept. And if you set m is equal to 0, let's just go ahead and try that. Why not? So m is equal to 0. So it'll be 0 is equal to negative 1.5 x squared plus 28 x minus 114. Uh, you can solve this using the quadratic formula, right? Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. If you use that, you can find the x-intercepts, and you're going to find that an x-intercept is equal to 0. Or x is equal to 6 makes moment equal to 0. So we know that we're starting here, and that we're going to end up touching here at the end. But it's not a straight line, right? Um, so what we can do is we can look at this, and we can see that because the x squared has a negative sign, it's going to flip it over. So a normal x squared would look something like this, but if we flip it, if we have a negative sign here, it's going to be the other way around. So we know we're going to have some sort of parabola that touches here and touches here, and we can just kind of draw that, basically. So this isn't great, because we're very stretched out, right? This is not equal to that, but it's just going to be some sort of parabola like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. The equation is the most important part here. So there you go. So that's how you do this equation, or that's how you do this uh, kind of problem. Uh, it's pretty tricky. There's a lot of moving parts. But basically, it's about finding the equation, just putting that x there as if it were a number. And then you end up with an equation, and it's just uh, algebra from there. So yeah, uh, good luck on your uh, statics homework, guys. Uh, feel free to check out my channel. I have a whole lot of videos like this. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.